Welcome to the Alberta Mountain Pirates. Today, we're going to show you the absolute horror we found that lives in and eats the dead trees. These critters are something I could have gone my whole life without knowing about, but since I have to know about them now, so do you. Spruce beetles, aka bark beetles, aka pine beetles, not to be confused with the invasive mountain pine beetle, aka white spotted sawyer beetles, are a forest pest that can not only destroy the trees and the ecosystem, but can also destroy you if you're not careful. But the worst part isn't even the beetles themselves. Let's dive into this creepy, crawly, heebie-jeebie inducing segment, the horror in the wood. Spruce beetles have long been a nuisance to those camping and adventuring through the forest, but in most cases, simply swatting the odd one away is most of the interaction the average forest goer will ever have with these monsters. Because we spent the summer essentially living in the woods and developing a deep connection with the logs we usually just burn, by vivisecting them into slabs, we in turn made a deep connection with some new friends that we found making those logs their home and their meal. The non-invasive, white-spotted sawyer has a life cycle of approximately two years, and in that time they cause an immense amount of destruction. You will generally spot the adults from June to September, but the larva can be found year-round. The thing has pincers on it. These beetles have been known to grow over two inches long, and if you include the antenna, over four when they are adults. Even in the larva stage, these disgusting grubs can be nearly 3 inches long and about 3 eighths of an inch thick, as far as we have seen personally anyways. That big guy went right on the fishing hook. The Sawyer beetle can cause damage to both the trees as well as people in both the larval and adult stages of life. But it is the larva that caused the most damage by far. The larva feeds inside the trunks of weak or recently killed conifer trees, whereas the adults cause injuries to the trees due to feeding on the bark and laying eggs, which starts the cycle all over again. This cycle is also an important process to the ecosystem as it helps trees decay. To feed on the trees, as I'm sure you can imagine, these horrors require quite the set of mandibles on them to be able to bore through and eat the wood. Look at that. Regardless, if they are in the larva stage or in the adult stage, these mandibles can cause a great deal of damage and pain to anyone or anything that gets bitten. These things are so gross, it only gets worse the more you know. Did I mention the adults fly? Poorly, may I add. So, as you are enjoying your day in the forest, sometimes you'll see them trying to go somewhere, but they inadvertently end up landing on you. For most other bugs, this would be no big deal, and a swift swat would knock it off. Not in the case of the white spotted Sawyer. When these things land on you, or anything else really, they stick like Velcro. Either their feet have small hooks on them, or a lot of little hairs, or they are indeed sticky somehow. You may require several hard wax, or a round of panicking as you flail about trying to get it off of you. This is all assuming it's not angry and you don't get bitten. I fear, sooner or later, one of these unholy bastards are going to accidentally fly into someone's mouth and they won't be so easy to get out. Generally, we have a kill on sight policy when we see these demons in our space. Usually, we just crush them, although sometimes I feel a flamethrower or a 12 gauge shotgun may be a more appropriate means of dealing with them. Cause I mean, sometimes you crush their guts out and it doesn't kill them and then they try to get away still, so ugh. A woodworm infestation can be easily spotted in many cases by the appearance of small piles of wood dust shavings that can be seen. And they're caused by the larva feeding within these galleries that they create. After the larva are done feeding, they emerge as adults through the wood, leaving behind circular holes, signaling the end of the damage to that tree, at least from that bug. Browsing your local lumber yard, you may see some 2x4s with many holes and tunnels. These are caused by this beetle. Another way to spot an infected tree is by the sound of grinding and munching being clearly audible to those nearby. This is a very strange thing to hear coming from a pile of logs, but now that we know what it is, it's, it's just absolutely gross. I'll insert some clips of the sound here.
These tunnels they create can cause further problems as they may stimulate the growth of a fungus that gives the wood a bluish cast and in most cases reduces its market value. But generally these tunnels do not degrade the structural integrity of the lumber. If anything, in some cases they add to the look. One thing that could be a potential problem if not dealt with properly is the beetles re-emerging from finished wood products after thinking they have been cleansed of the Satan bugs. To combat this, cutting your wood into slabs helps. Also, and if the option is available, heating up the wood pieces to over 100 degrees Celsius for an extended period of time will kill the larva. This won't remove the worms from the wood, but it will for sure kill them. I found several dead ones in some 2x4s I found that I purchased at Home Depot. All in all, there are plenty of horrors that lurk close by that most go unaware of their entire lives, but this one hits pretty close to home. I wish I never knew that these things existed, but I take solace in the fact that they are small enough to be squishable, because the reality is, everything in the forest is trying to kill you, but most of it just isn't big enough. Hope you learned something in this episode. Be sure to leave a like on this video, comment your thoughts on the worms and the beetles, and share this video to at least one other person. This all helps support the channel and it doesn't cost a dime. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.